Steve, welcome back to the show, man. Thanks. I'm actually a longtime viewer and listener, first time um, visitor, as they say. <laughs> you haven't been on before? I haven't been on before, man. I, I've been oh. wanting to be on your show for a while, but we haven't had a chance to connect and yeah. do like a segment, talk about the brand. I know you yeah. do a great job representing the brand, talking about the brand, hunting with some of the products you have from oh, the yeah. brand. And, you know, I appreciate you having me in the program. Yeah, my pleasure. I guess Darren had done or pre previous stuff for us and probably yeah and he actually you know he's in texas so he's come to the studio you're joining us from california california yeah my home Where studio in california? california yeah uh northern california okay what is it's uh, about 30 miles away from san francisco so actually um red country as i call it <laughs> good. yeah um, there's you know there's pockets of california that are oh yeah yeah people. there's yeah. uh okay. there's i wish there was more i wish mm -hmm. the state wasn't uh, you know, especially in big metropolitan areas where the big populations are, you know, deep blue, where, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, some of the crazy policies come from. Uh, yeah. I'd like to, I wish I could own uh, all the cool toys you have in Texas, uh, but I can't. <laughs> so name one, one, give us one example of something that you're not, you're prohibited from owning. Like, uh, so California has a DOJ list of approved firearms. So if it's not on that list, I can't own it. So anything from a Steyr AUG to a, uh, a regular AR-15 that has the regular furniture, not the wacky California furniture that you could have on there from a bunch of stuff like suppressors. I can't have suppressors in California. No uh, suppressors honestly, at all? At all. Nobody oh can God. have suppressors except law enforcement in California. I didn't know um, concealed carry. Uh, most places in California, even though it's allowed if you apply and you have a friendly sheriff that will sign off, but not a lot of people have concealed carry in California. Wow. Uh, maybe in some of the rural, rural areas, but uh, like suburban, metropolitan areas, almost Forget not. Forget about it um you know so explains the crime rates like in various places also you know yeah. um yeah but that's not know. unique to california i mean we have a look at colorado for example which i call california junior these days <laughs> uh well you know because a lot of californians move have moved to colorado texas yeah. like austin area a lot yeah. of places and um thanks for things, that uh, things yeah, change you know, <laughs> Boulder, that, that's Denver. not my, my fault <laughs> yeah no i know I'm, I'm trying to change Denver. things in California for the better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, there's, there's still hope. I mean, there's always hope. Uh, hopefully this, this ship turns around, but yeah, uh, that's, you know, every state has the big metropolitan areas that typically are blue and Boulder and Denver, you know, you've got, uh, Portland and then you've got Seattle. Uh, it is what it is. Chicago. Uh, Oh gosh, Chicago. Yeah. So uh, it was interesting though, because they had the, the DNC in Chicago this past week and they had all the, the shop owners boarded up their shops in preparation for potential looting, rioting. Yeah, uh, there's all, you know, there's always pro protests happening when, yeah. um, you know, these con big con political conventions happen. And yeah. unfortunately, um, with the people's, People exercising their right to demonstrate and you know the freedom of speech that they want to project. Some bad actors do bad things, and uh, you know business owners are being prudent and they're trying to protect their livelihoods, their properties, and and such. You know, it's yeah. that's the unfortunate state of things right now. But here's the reality: the uh, RNC was in Milwaukee. Nobody boarded up their businesses. They were like, "Yes, we're going to get an influx of cash." You know, so I, and if that offends anyone, then, Hey, maybe do a little soul, soul searching. Cause yeah. it's the truth. Um, it is what it is. Anyway. Um, how's the weather here? It's, it's actually very it's nice. Cool. It's nice. Uh, it's, it's been very temperate. Haven't had mm. to actually use AC, uh, for a couple of days. So it's, it's been very nice where yeah. I am at least. When does, uh, the, when does hunting season really get going in California? Oh gosh. Is there a hunting season in California? <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely no predator hunting season in California because you can't use like 
these great products um, in California, especially like uh, thermal sites or night vision sites on, on the weapons. Um, maybe night vision to like walk around or do some training, uh, but hunting, no. There's only like traditional seasons like turkey, uh, deer, uh, fall and spring. Um, I have a brother-in-law uh, who actually lives in Oregon uh, that comes here for uh, fall turkey season. Maybe I'll, I'll tag along with him this year. He's got a good spot. Cool. But um, what about dove hunting? Is there is there a big dove hunting culture in California? Um, not so much dove. There's a pheasant hunting near the Sacramento area. I've been there a couple of times. Uh-huh. Got a, like, lots of birds. Um, dove, not that I'm aware of, honestly. Okay. I know. I know. Dove this season is huge in Texas. Oh yeah. September 1st, baby. We're taking the kids out of school every year and we're having a party. So nice. Yeah. It's <laughs> fun. Um, what, uh, what is, I was going to say, what is California's hunting culture when it comes to thermals, but you just said they're completely illegal. Yeah. Um, again, California has statues on the books that you mm-hmm. can't hunt with what they say, uh, electro like scopes with electronics that, project uh, artificial light there, there's a whole bunch of verbiage but you can have them in your uh, possession you just can't hunt with them you can have them in your possession you can legally I believe like go to the range and shoot with them but you know what's the purpose now why are you going right. to buy you know, a thermal scope just to you know go to the range you'd want to go hunting um probably on private land for uh, like there are feral hogs in california you know various pockets uh, probably farmland, uh, you know, predation. There's also predator hunting, uh, probably on private land that you could probably do, but on public land, uh, no, I don't, I don't believe you can do that. Isn't y'all's feral hog system like you have to get a tag? You know, I you am. To. I haven't looked at California hunting regs in a long time because honestly, I've given up because the rules are so convoluted. Whenever right. I want to go hunting for a coyotes or hogs with the gear i'm usually in louisiana or texas or someplace else where it's a lot more friendly or a lot easier right uh, i go with people that know what they're doing and you know that go out hunting virtually you went to louisiana recently i think um i went to louisiana when was this um i was uh with guns and gear i did a segment there uh near new orleans there i forget the city's name it's a small city I was there for a little bit. Uh, I didn't do any hunting. I was uh, there a year ago in, um, I think, like, like central Louisiana near Alexandria mm-hmm. at uh, Honey Break Lodge. We did some hunting there uh, for feral hogs. So we got a few. Uh, I've done some hunting for feral hogs in, in Alexandria uh, before, where, you know, a lot of success there. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of farmland around. And, uh-huh. and there's uh, abundance of hogs so <clears throat> I, I you know i've used product uh for for you know for hunting you know when i have the opportunity you know yeah. call myself a desk jockey nowadays I, I don't get to get get out as much as i want to <laughs> uh-huh. yeah well duty calls right <laughs> you know um, it's a tough job somebody's gonna do it yeah um well you guys um obviously have a great reception in Texas because of our hunting culture, whether that's predators or hogs or, you know, my, my favorite thing um, when applied to deer hunting is taking something like this 640 sidekick here and just making sure that I don't blow deer out as I'm walking into my stand, whether that's rifle or bow or whatever, uh, because it's, that's the worst feeling in the world is having something yeah, blow at you. He, oh, and it scares the crap out of you in the dark, right? <laughs> or it all prevents, you know, helps you get, uh, prevents you from getting skunked also. You never know when you could, you know, run up mm. on those little critters oh, yeah. uh, and you're not going to have a, a good day. But yeah, yeah. coming into a stand before, you know, daylight, before hunting season, you know, before hunting uh, time, allows you to hunt, you know, to get set up is, is, you know, having equipment that kind of shows you where animals may be bedding or maybe mm-hmm. uh, in the vicinity of your area, you don't want to spook anything. It's, it's a great resource to kind of understand and see where 
potential either hazards or opportunities may be. And then you, it gives you the opportunity to, to kind of set up your stand and understand, you know, how to stop and your approach. Yeah. Well, and it, you need to study the regs if you're going to do this, depending on what state, if you've drawn any Western tags this year. But, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Every state is different. And we yeah. always recommend you check your local regs mm -hmm. because uh, it, it varies from state to state, sometimes even, you know, county to county in, in various states. And you want to, you know, do things right. Yeah. Well, for, for example, I've taken one of these uh, to New Mexico, a, a thermal monocular, many times over. But the caveat is you it, it has to it can't be able to be attached to a weapon, right? So that's the that's the catch. Like so it has to truly be a monocular. It can't fix on to a, a weapon in any shape or form. So yeah, you just gotta study those regs. And they're all different. And then I told you this year when I went to Africa, I really wanted to take the six forty contractor to South Africa and and uh bush pig hunt with it and try to yeah. call jackals. You're like, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Uh, no, that's, uh, you know, you know so thermal weapon sites are regulated by a, a state department. They're ITAR, ITAR controlled mm -hmm. and uh, leaving them, you know, leaving with them out of the U.S., even to Mexico or Canada is unlawful. And I highly do not recommend doing so. Yeah. Well, my taxidermist was on that trip with me, and he showed up. He's like, oh, look at this, and he had his thermal with him. I was like, you know, you could get in a lot of trouble for that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't hear that. <laughs> so I think they are just taking advantage of the TSA folks, uh, the, their ignorance on what they were looking at. Very uh, dangerous. Very not dangerous. advised. Yeah. No. Um, so let's talk about this uh, 640 sidekick. It's, this mm -hmm. thing is tiny, fits in my pocket. But it's got amazing performance for, I mean, I, how much does this I'm, thing weigh? It's like, it doesn't even weigh a pound. No, it's uh, literally, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, about 350 grams or so. Oh. Uh, we actually released some major updates for a lot of our products, which has really improved the image quality, contrast, um, edge detail, a lot of things to make a much better experience for our users. So you, if you have a, a Armasite product, uh, I would encourage you to always register it because you get the, you know, the full warranty and you get notifications from us when we do release major updates. But go to our site, register, uh, download the update, and you'll see an you know, immense improvement in the performance, uh, not just mm -hmm. the frame rate, well, scanning, but the image quality itself, uh, stability of the product, you know, makes it a lot more uh, better user experience. Um, do the update, you'll see a world of difference. Yeah, I updated mine last week, and uh, yeah, big difference. Uh, not that the the quality was poor, but it's definitely yeah. better. Uh, yeah. Here's and this is because I don't understand how this stuff works really. But how can you have a product that you already design that I've had in my hands for in, you know, the case of the, uh, the 320 contractor, I've had that for a couple of years and now we're adding updates to it that make it function better. It's um, interesting to me. We strive to release the best product possible with the best user experience. But mm -hmm. as the product is kind of released into the wild, we receive back uh, feedback from our end users, uh, our pro staff, industry insiders, which you know the usage of kind of spans uh, the uh, the entire continent, continental United States. Um, performance in the lab, performance in a specific area may be different, as you may know. Like using thermal. Uh, it you know, depending on weather conditions, humidity, dew point, all these you know salient factors really changes your experience uh, when using thermal product. So based on valuable feedback from partners, customers, whatnot, we strive to always enhance, always improve above and beyond uh, what we feel you know was a good product to release to the public with great, you know, good performance. No product is perfect. 
right. when it's initially released. You know, there's, uh, I mean, say the first iPhone was released. It wasn't a fantastic product like uh, the, say the, iPro, uh, the iPhone 15 right now is. It's a totally different world, right? So as a product is released, there are improvements at times that happen to make a user experience better, easier, mm -hmm. quality of image, performance, recording. You know, there's different things that can always be improved upon and optimized as we learn and uh, based on feedback that we receive, you can change the programming and algorithms to make small modifications, which may affect something for somebody, say, hunting uh, in Minnesota versus Texas in a more profound way based on the environment, temperature, yeah. based on type of um, you know performance that they will see through the product versus um, at the base when the product is just released. Yeah. Well, it's super simple firmware update. Uh, it took me like five minutes um, right. and bam, done and done. Um, we've got a, a pretty significant sale coming up here. True. Labor Day is coming up and, you know, we are going to be offering a significant uh, sale for all Armistead products through Armistead.com and through various uh, partners. I don't want to kind of let the cat slip out of the bag just yet. You know, visit our site. You'll see the promo. You'll see some uh, things going on during the pro promotional weekend. But definitely stay tuned uh, and uh, check, uh, you know, different sites. Uh, check our website and you'll see uh, starting August 28th, uh, uh, a large uh, promotional Labor Day weekend sale that uh, we're going to launch. Awesome. Awesome. Um what is our top selling unit? Top in the selling States? unit? Yeah. I would say the sidekick and the contractor, honestly. Um, the contract has been around a little bit longer, so it has a little more lead time. But since we've started shipping the sidekicks, uh, we've literally shipped thousands of them by now. It's been a really good product, very user friendly, very small a lot of utility for a lot of people. So it's it's been, and especially now with the uh, improvement in uh, the frame rate, uh, what, what, as you pan and tilt, you know, you, there's, you know, it's almost seamless now, if not seamless um, when, while you're scanning. So it's, it's really a great product. We've started shipping the collector, and, uh, the, I'm sorry, the jockey and the collector and I think the jockey is going to be a, a big success. Also, a lot of people like the form factor, the small package for a thermal clip-on. Uh, the collector, I think, is a, is a really nice, uh, compact, uh, kind of small mini thermal weapon site, something like closer range. Some, if you're just, somebody's hunting like a, within 100 yards or uh, maybe 200 yards and there's brush or you know woodland and you want, like uh, if you're used to using like a 1X, scope like an aim point or eotech and, and you want something similar but in thermal yeah collector is definitely it it also has digital magnification as well so it gives you a 1x to a 4x so in case you want to zoom in a little bit and see the target a little bit you know better it has the capabilities you know all the same functions and features that all the armistate products have like picture in picture video record still image record selection of palettes color palettes and the radical styles and radical colors, really good battery life, also tiny form factor. Um, you know, I, I believe we, you know, we continue to release great products, which are very user friendly, uh, which I think is very important. A lot of, I think that kind of gets lost with a lot of uh, brands where everything is packed in um, and the utility is kind of, hindsight you know it's um, not top of mind the yeah. actual hunting or hunter perspective where you need to be able to quickly change things out uh e easy to get to menus very intuitive process uh easy to use is i think is key for a lot of people that just don't have the patience or time to not only read the manual because honestly nobody reads manuals <laughs> <laughs> but 
to get out there and be able to use the product, you know, from the get go and have a great experience. I think we do that really well. And um, we can see that, you know, the reception that we're getting mm-hmm. and uh, the feedback that we get from people, uh, you know, after they use our products and how they like not just their economics, but the controls, how things are laid out, the UI, how easy it is to navigate inside the product and activate uh, actions in the products. Um, I think we do a really good job of that. Well, yeah, I think you have like less than, I think it's less than four seconds to get someone's attention with like a post on social media. Yeah. And you think people are reading manuals? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> not in this instant gratification i I want what i yeah. want and i want it right now society yeah. that we live in um but yes that has been my my experience personally and i've used other thermals in the past good products very hard to navigate especially in the dark like and that's the thing like uh with the contractors especially super user-friendly you can you can get to where you need to go inside the unit in the dark it's uh there's not a lot of yeah, I think some units are just like uh, they're over gimmicked, right? They have too much going on, and I, that's for me the exact opposite of what I want. I'm sure there's some cool features, right? But if you if you have to spend uh, extra time in the field trying to figure out it, you know, figure it out. Well, the, dark, the last place you want to be frustrated is in the field. You're already kind of stressed. Your adrenaline yeah. is pumping. You're you know getting ready. Um, because some, for some people, they don't have ample opportunities to go hunting. For some people, it's, you know, once every couple of months or once every six months. For some, it's, you know, once every couple of years. So when they're out there and they're, you know, prepping for their stand, trying to set up, the last thing they want to do is, oh, how do I do this? How do I do that? Uh, have a bad, a poor experience in the field. Because if they have a poor experience in the field, they're not going to want to go back to that product or use that product again. They're just going to stick it back in the safe or the closet and you know, they'll be done with it or, or, they'll, or they'll just sell it. Yeah. And it's, it's simplicity is I think key for our community because we like to keep things simple because the simpler things are to operate and navigate and use, the more easier it is to do what we love, right? Is to enjoy nature, mm-hmm. stock, and take good clean shots uh, where there's opportunity to do so. And uh, that's what it's all about, right? Is uh, having the success in the field. Absolutely. Um, Coming from a European background, I I do want to talk a little bit about their thermal culture. Um, I haven't, I haven't hunted in Europe. South Africa? I haven't hunted in Europe either. Um, I know they have Armasite sells, you know, a bunch of products in Europe. No, we don't have a European office currently back, uh, during the FLIR days, I believe they did. So with uh, various contracts, we do work with, uh, various entities, uh, government, uh, military and law enforcement entities around the world. But in terms of, uh, hunting community, uh, right now we don't have, a large presence uh it's only like uh, government contracts wise mm-hmm. uh on the hunting side um with th- something like thermal scopes you need expert licenses it gets a little you know very complicated to do so so it's not something that um we do at, at this moment but it, it is so in our future is to expand. specifically designed with the american hunter in mind then absolutely, absolutely. okay okay because I, I know just for the little bit I do know about European hunting culture, most of it's there's no ARs. It's all they're all putting scopes on bolt guns. Absolutely. Uh I just got a email from Armasite, uh was about uh, an AR build. And who who's the partner we, we just uh, Fab about? Defense. Fab okay. Defense is a is a, is a, is our partner. Uh they make great furniture. Mm-hmm. Um it's an Israeli company. Um They've made uh, great furniture for ARs and AKs for many, many years. Uh, I think it's a very nice symbiotic uh, partnership because we make fantastic optics. They make great furniture to make your build to your liking, to your specification, customize it in various you know 
form factors from stocks to grips, uh, bipods, um, angled grips, uh, you know, um, uh, a lot of things that they offer for the, for AK builds and AR builds. And um, you can configure your AR to, to the way you want it. So I think yeah. it's, 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 a, it's a good partnership. No, absolutely. Um, and then talk, talk to me a little bit about the tripods. And that's not something, I don't think Darren and I ever discussed that really on the show. Um, the tripods, um, it's another brand, uh, Ufanar, it's a Swedish or Norwegian company. We don't really work with them. Uh, I know we've used their products okay, I'll, I'll edit this uh, on, part on some hunts and, and some shoots. I'll edit fantastic. this out. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it's a fantastic, uh, very stable tripod. It's just um, I, I don't have that much experience with it, so I can't really speak yeah, yeah. intelligently about it. Okay. No big deal. I'll cut that out. Um, I threw you a curveball there. I didn't. <laughs> it's okay. I, I, I don't know much about them. I never, I never yeah. seen one. So, um, okay. Um, uh, let's see what else I wanted to ask you about here, which I'll just edit all of this stuff out. Um, so back in the day, uh, Armor Site was purchased, and I think there was a from. The company that bought Armasite, there was a lack of customer service. I think people were well franchise. When Armasite, the first Armasite, because we're we're kind of the second edition Armasite right. now. Uh, when FLIR Systems, which is now Teledyne, because FLIR itself was bought out, uh, I believe two years ago by this big uh, conglomerate, also, uh -huh. uh, which is funny enough, um, <laughs> <laughs> acquisitions in the industry. Um, I don't know that they they knew. What, they were kind of dipping their toes into because kind of FLIR has a long standing history serving law enforcement, military, those communities, big contracts, big systems, uh, working in the consumer arena. Uh, that's why they wanted the Arma site initially is to kind of start a consumer division. They mm -hmm. called it the OTS division or outdoor tactical systems division. Uh, which gave them a kind of a, a footprint uh, with commercial products for hunting, um, with uh, low light products, night vision thermal that Armasite used to produce. And back in the day, systems like the Nemesis and the Predator and the Zeus. Uh, I Apollo, remember the Zeus. You probably, yeah. yeah, you probably heard some of those names, right? Um, and they had uh, acquired Armasite and uh, Kind of ran it for about i believe about five years and realized that the consumer market is very vastly different it's more nuanced uh there's a lot more sir uh, back-end service you have to provide and not the service that they're used to like have a 30-day turnaround mm -hmm. uh if something goes wrong you need to be a lot quicker because people are spending money uh, on the consumer side and they don't have the patience um uh, as you know in today's uh world of, <clears throat> yeah. with instant gratification so um they quickly realized that well not quickly you know, it took them a few years they decided to get out of that business and so they kind of divested the brand and the brand standard stood a little bit dormant for a little bit and um kind of made a lot of people upset because they had these products and there was no services available yeah. um post facto so actually when Essentria bought Armasite from FLIR, like the brand, and we started everything, um, a lot of the services, like servicing kind of we started, you know, we, we were able to also get our Tempe, the Tempe facility that we have now, which actually has changed because, you know, we're, we're growing so rapidly. We, we've moved. Uh, it's, I don't know if you've seen them in the wire, but um, we have actually moved to a larger facility in Tempe, Arizona, where we have our production facility and where we, we make and, and, and build and assemble all our thermal products. Um, it, it was this summer, actually, that we, we made the transition uh -huh. and moved uh, buildings and uh, production facilities. And now we've expanded to a much larger uh, footprint uh, because we're growing so rapidly which is a good thing. Yeah. Uh, and so a lot of this, you know, kind of when that 
reacquisition happened and the Pharmacite uh, 2.0, as it were, was restarted, we picked up some of those um, issues and started servicing and providing service or offering service to uh, for some of those uh, legacy products to the best of the ability because it's a different team now. You know, yeah. some of that knowledge transferred didn't happen. You know, from techs, so our new techs, you know, doing the best they can to service uh, those legacy products if they can. So we're trying to revitalize and reestablish trust because of what happened previously, yeah. you know, it, it's unfortunate. That's a big that, hurdle that, to try to overcome, yeah, you know? It is, um, it is. And I think we're doing a good job. Uh, oh, for we sure. have great customer service guys located here in, uh, in the States, uh, great support. Uh, the Tempe facility, uh, you know, as I mentioned just now, has expanded. We have new techs and new capabilities and uh, service. You know, we don't have a, a large return uh, ratio right now, like all of the products that we're shipping, uh, customers are very happy with the products. So we're not getting a lot of returns. There's not a lot of issues with the products. So that's, that's, you know, that's, well, they come with a protective case and uh, that's not what I'm talking about, you know, a failing oh, no, no, I was just going to say, I don't, <laughs> I don't put mine in there. And so, yeah. you know, sometimes like this contractor here, the 320 rides around in my front seat and I'm banging it around and it's dark and, you know, I knocked I knocked one of the knobs off of it. Mm -hmm. It was my fault, right? I sent it in and had it back within 10 days. Yeah. And that wasn't because of, that wasn't Armorside's fault. I mean, I'm the one that beat the hell out of it, right? So, yeah. Uh, that um, was, we, we, we do our best to, to, you know, address, you know, issues and, you know, get you back in the field as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we have a good team to, to be able to do that. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. So, made in America. I mean, that's yeah. a good sales pitch right there. Hey, yeah. uh, I don't I think a lot, a lot of competitors of, I, aren't. <laughs> I don't think a lot of companies can make that statement that you know, build, assemble, you know, uh, thermal products in the U.S. Yeah, it's 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 a bold statement, and we're very proud of it. And uh, yeah, you're right. Not a lot of uh, brands can can say that. Where a lot of things are just white labeled OEM from China. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, sometimes, uh, things happen and they can't be serviced. So they replace products because, you know, importing and exporting components is difficult at times or depending on the brand. So yeah. we pride ourselves that we're able to service, produce and service the product through its entire life cycle here in the United States. What about on the uh, night vision side of things well what, night vision are... we we use exclusively u.s tubes from elbit and now uh to some degree from l3 so all our two the tubes that we use in uh the housings and the bodies which are also u.s bodies uh carson body uh, pbs 14s mm -hmm. um in the u.s so things like the pbs 14s are u.s made because yeah. the tubes are u.s made would you say that the thermal marketplace is significantly bigger than night, the night vision at this point? I think, I think that's an interesting question. And the best way to answer it is I think thermal has definitely gained a lot of ground and to certain degrees have superseded night mm -hmm. vision to certain degrees because of the utility that it presents to the hunter. Uh, and I guess, let me explain that answer because with thermal, you get great detection um, in completely either low light or completely dark environments. You don't need auxiliary lights, you don't need uh, auxiliary IR lights. It's a passive system that detects uh, infrared light or heat signatures and produces a great image nowadays, right? the technology has progressed so much that the quality of the sensors, the electronics, the software that runs all this has become so good that you can see and, you know, at a far distance, again, depending on the model, you know, far is relative, right? Yeah. You know, one model can be you know, a couple hundred yards. Some models can see 
you know, a lot farther, or even more so than a couple hundred yards. Uh, and detection is, you know, at some cases, 2,000 yards, right? right? You know, almost, you know, over a kilometer, uh, which traditional night vision, and to a certain degree, even not, you know, digital night vision can't because of the limitation of how much, how far artificial light can travel, right? Or how much artificial light from moonlight, starlight, that amplifies the scene for digital night vision or traditional night vision to use image intensifier tubes is kind of the limiting factor. Mm -hmm. With thermal, you don't have that limiting factor of the artificial, you know, the need for artificial light. And so it can detect things a lot farther. You can see things a lot better because of the new technology. So it gives you that advantage. You're able to, when you're scanning, you're able to see that coyote kind of prowling the edge of a, you know, a woodland or uh kind of tracking well, I mean, through I a just, farm field I use or something it for my uh we have a huge wheat field at the deer lease and so right. i use the 640 uh, sidekick find the pigs and then stock them with the 320 or 640 contractor sure and, sure. and you can that that wheat field i don't know i'd have to map it i don't know how big it is but it's it's freaking massive and so if I, if you're going to go from one side to the other, you're probably going to drive there. That's how far away it is. You're not walking across it. <laughs> so, you know, I'll see them on one side. Right. And that's pro that's gotta be, it's over a thousand yards all day. Um, so the detection on that tiny little unit right. is, is, I mean, it's incredible. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm a huge fan, but yeah, it's funny because when I first started hunting at night, the first unit I had was night vision and it was, I mean, I was limited to like 100 yards, maybe 150. Again, depending on lighting conditions with like a Gen 3 night vision device, you, you're able to see three, 400 yards, right? You, you know, mm -hmm. the closer you, you are to the target, the better uh, the detail, you know, you could recognize the target better, you know, person, animal, whatever. Yeah. Uh, you, you get a recognizable detail versus, let's say, thermal, where you, you see, you could, you could recognize a pig, uh, or, you know, or a coyote, you could see the difference between the yeah. two or a cow or whatever, yeah. horse or deer. Um, but the sheer, you know, utility to be able to scan, stock, hunt, I think thermal is really, really kind of gaining huge growth uh, in these last several years. You know, the feral hog explosion in the south and it's moving all across the country there's hogs in the on the east coast south carolina north carolina virginia you know um there's there's hogs in california but you know we're limited what we could use to hunt those yeah some of those uh, states have enacted hunting bans on feral yeah I, I i don't understand why because it's... they're saying well their logic is you're going to scatter them out and they're going to become wary and harder to kill and if we just prevent you from doing that we can trap them and we can remove them all like kentucky doing this so. Right. Yeah, and I don't know what the results in Kentucky, but I think it's kind of a flawed <laughs> I think, perspective. I think uh, in five years we'll we'll still have hogs in Kentucky. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I think. Yeah. So it's like uh, uh, these animals are tenacious. They they've they are they have been able to survive uh, droughts and wet seasons and hunting and poisoning and trapping, mm -hmm. and I, I don't know that there's any one good solution to really kind of turn the tide of their the population honestly yeah. it's just they they reproduce very quickly and they're smart and they're other omnivores so they basically can sustain themselves on virtually kind of almost any environment so it's 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 a like cockroaches oh yeah yeah. And, well, and equally, even more so uh, adaptable is the coyote. I mean, yeah, that is the most adaptable uh, mammal in North America, the hands down. It's it lives everywhere. It didn't it didn't always. But the uh, when we removed gray wolves from the equation, that was their yeah. their number one competitor. And so those in, uh, environments opened up to them and they've made the most of it. Well, even wolves, um, I think, and where the areas they've been kind of reintroduced, I think, I don't remember which state, but one state, I believe, allows uh, some limited hunting for wolves nowadays. Three. Uh, Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho have okay. seasons. Yeah. There you go. 
Yep. Then the Great Lakes uh, states are, that's managed as a separate population, and right now that population, even though there's more wolves there, which is so stupid, Minnesota has estimated uh, 1,700 wolves, which is more than any other state, and they wow. can't do anything about it, right? So, uh, And then their uh, governor, Tim Waltz, who's now running with Kamala Harris, he wants the wolves protected in perpetuity, and he calls himself a friend of uh, sportsmen, and I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, what a farce. But uh, that's what that's what you get. Not in he was uh, back in the day. He had a good rating with the NRA. Not not mm-hmm. anymore. He's uh, all for very tight gun control. So y'all take that well, bit of information. He has to be running on that ticket, right? <laughs> Do what? He has to be running oh. on that ticket. Yeah, she was. She said, Kamala said uh, she'll give Congress ninety days. I could I could find this clip and play it. Maybe I'll splice it in. She'll give Congress 90 days to enact AR, uh, stricter enforcement, like ba- just banning. Basically, she's like, I'll give them 90 days to come up with responsible gun control alternatives with ARs, and then I'll just use executive order to ban it. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like, well, there's this thing called the Constitution, but, you know, we'll see how that goes. Forward. Yeah, yeah. We, we've faced this before with oh, yeah. the the salt ban in the 90s and i don't know that there were any um positive kind of results from that i I don't know that if politicians learn from our history but i don't think it's going to do anything um the bad actors will always have uh access to various things and you know the only people that kind of suffer are the law-abiding citizens mm-hmm. that, you know, don't want to get in trouble with, with the government or, you know, the various law enforcement agencies. But people that want to get illegal guns or, a you know, carbines or MSRs or whatever, they'll always be able to get it. It's, yeah. it's not that difficult, honestly. And uh, that's just a fact. So when you think about the university system, in America, would you say that it leans pretty far to the left? It like depends colleges. on the university. It depends on where the university is. Not every university, I think, leans yeah. to the left. But the majority, uh, right? Them do. Uh, yeah. The one I uh, the, I went to San Francisco State University, uh, go Gators. Um, didn't even have a football team. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, that, that's a left-leaning university or UC Berkeley, very left-leaning university. Yeah. Um, but... <clears throat> I don't know that. I don't know. Well, the I reason why I asked the question. I don't was, think uh, that uh, politics should be part of university. I don't think it should be right or left. Yeah. I don't think um, that generation of you know st- like students. We should not have politics in our in our in our school system at all. People should form their own opinions about. Uh, values based on their upbringing, you know, family values, yeah. uh, and trying to indoctrinate uh, kids and or young adults, I, I don't think is is right because you're imposing your own kind of perspective and will on somebody that's kind of still naive without world experience and, and knowing any better. Mm-hmm. And we see the results, you know. Yeah. Uh, so. That's just my opinion. No, no, I, uh, and I, I agree with you. I would I would say, though, that I, I think the university system has been hijacked for about 50 years, um, and it's a little bit, it's pretty liberal. Not all, every college, right? You can go to specific ones where you know it's going to be, like if you went to a Christian college, okay, hopefully they, that's a little different. But um, Duke University put out a study, released the results of a study last week, and the study found that increased gun control did not lower homicide rates and they studied it for three years and so i thought wow okay that's that's pretty telling i think i read something i i believe that the use usage of firearms in active shooters is not as large as people committing suicide with firearms i think that's the bigger problem and Mm -hmm. that's kind of the more mental health issue of people using firearms to commit suicide um if they don't have access to firearms, they figure out a way to kind of end their lives also. So I think it's kind of a, a skewed statistic regardless, mm-hmm. but the cause of like P- 
people going out and killing people with firearms and yes mass shootings they, they do happen and uh they do happen i don't know that they happen so often but they do happen yeah it's unfortunate when they happen it's very sad to see schools being shot up and it, it, it sucks but it's uh unstable people that shouldn't have access to firearms uh that do this in my opinion and we need to control you know how you know the background checks because everybody gets a background check by right. a firearm there is no way around you know i hear this all these there's loopholes to get around this. there is no loopholes to acquire a firearm everybody goes through a, a background check it's mm -hmm. just the system how they approve who is allowed to you know obtain a firearm maybe needs tweaking um but hey you know, i'm sure there's you know, a, you know if crack. people really wanted to you know have a solution like a real solution we probably could come up with a good solution as as a society and as a country but mm -hmm. i don't know that our politicians are up to the task yeah well uh, hunter biden got one while he was using crack so there you go <laughs> right uh that's one of the questions and by the way you can't lie on there uh but uh he's facing the music now um anyway yeah i was just i thought that was interesting for for duke to put that out there uh but it's it's common sense right everyone knows like stricter gun laws don't don't do anything but uh put the burden on the law-abiding people sure so um uh, yeah the state fair of texas came out last week last week and said no more guns but i mean are the criminals going to pay attention to that <laughs> right uh rhetorical question i'm not going to the state fair though i'll tell you that um <laughs> <laughs> well hey uh y'all check it out we've got the uh big labor day sale promo coming up august 28th it's going to kick off uh check out arma site social media website all that stuff to find out you know how big the savings are going to be what what you can take advantage of there and uh steve i appreciate the time you got to come down to texas uh we got to get something on the books and we got to go get after some hogs that'll be fantastic man i'd love to all right brother well i appreciate it thank you i appreciate you having me in the program my pleasure take it easy